chapter 8 this is what the Lord says I will save my people from the countries of the east and the west and bring them back to live in Jerusalem and they will be my people and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God so then we have uh, and so we last week we talked about Jerusalem gets its new names and uh, it starts there in the beginning of chapter 8 uh, but it it uh, becomes the center of attention in all eschatology is the city of Jerusalem with the throne there. And then it has in chapter, or in verse 9 I think, but its name is uh, Kadosh and Holy. So there'll be no, uh, it'll, there'll be no defilement, it'll be holy. And uh, then the other word, what was it? Oh, truth, Ha'emet, the city of truth. Uh, so there'll be no lies. So everything is holy and true. And that's the n new names given to Yerushalayim by Zechariah in chapter 8 there. So then we have this picture of blessing for the people. And this is old people sitting and the young people playing. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And uh, uh, somewhere in there we have that. Um, Let's see, where are we? Verse, uh, verse uh, before that time there was no wages. Does anybody know where the children are playing here? Five. Oh, way back to five. <clears throat> see, I'm in a hurry for the kingdom to come, so I've been skipping over many verses. <laughs> this is what Almighty Lord says. It may seem marvelous to the remnant of your people, and then it says, I'll save my countries. Oh, once again, it's verse 4. Yes, it, every uh, year I think I better get some bifocals, but I'm stubborn. This is what, um, once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, either uh, each with his cane in his hand because of his age. The city streets will be filled with boys playing there. How many has been to Jerusalem lately? And what do you see in the streets? You see old men sitting on the bench with their cane watching the children play. It's very nice, right? So this is a picture of blessing. Now what in the Bible days, as we know from the patriarchs in, in Bereshit, there in Genesis, what is the greatest blessing in the natural realm is to have descendants, children, and to get to live long enough to see your grandchildren and their, your great-grandchildren playing. This is like the greatest blessing in Bible days to have. And uh, the, the matter of descendants, though, is, is huge. It's not so much today to us, but it was in the Bible days to keep the first commandment is to uh, fill the earth. So we have this picture of blessing for the people, old people sitting, young people playing, and this is about generations, though. What's, what is it, Dor in Hebrew? D-O-R is generation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, so there, that word is big in, in Hebrew. So in our Bible, this is the greatest blessing. Long life, many children, and descendants. So here we have in this verse 4, you have a picture of both. Now this is after the city of Jerusalem has become uh, the holy mountain and the city of truth. And this is eschatologically speaking about the time to come, which has not yet been fulfilled, but it's partially being fulfilled today since 1948. And we have pictures of the little kids. Uh, they're the cutest little guys and, and uh, running around the streets of Jerusalem. And it's fascinating sometimes because in Jerusalem, there's not much fear. And these little kids will be running around 
you know, you don't let your kids walk to school in America anymore when they're five years old. But in Jerusalem they can. And, and uh, I, re I remember uh, we were in the flag march in Jerusalem and there's chunks of concrete flying from the Arab side of the street into the Jews as we're carrying our Israeli flags to Damascus Gate there, you know, not the nicest place in Israel, Damascus Gate. But, but there's chunks of cement that they're throwing, you know, and then there's soldiers chasing the rock throwers and, and, and it's, it's a little tenuous, you know, and, and then you'll see a, a Jewish lady with her stroller with twins in it, just walking along. <laughs> and here's this stuff going on. And <laughs> she's walking along, and it's like, welcome to Jerusalem. It's the city of peace. <laughs> but she has, the Jew is in the land fulfilling the pr prophecy and fulfilling the word of the Lord and they have children playing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, so it, anyway, no more wars, no more captivity, living in peace, growing old, watching the children play. How good can it get? And this picture is, is happening today, of course, but it's the fulfillment of it is not yet because the context here is, is not just the return but then Messiah's return as well. Okay, so uh, it says once again, Start verse four starts with once again. So what is once again referred to? It's going back to David and Solomon's kingdom. This is when Israel lived in peace and safety and everybody was, was happy and prosperous. And so once again, it re returns us to David and Solomon's kingdom and then the son of David's kingdom yet to come. So when there was war and prosperity in Israel, everybody got to enjoy their children playing, right? So uh, when Mashiach ben David comes again, these verses will be uh, fulfilled, but a thousand times greater than they are today. Okay, so verse 6 is like an insert before more promises of restoration. And verse 6, this is, it may seem marvelous to the remnant of the people at that time, but will it seem marvelous to me? So, and this is where we left off last week, which one of, one of my favorite words, right, that means miracle or, or um, uh, a wonder, type thing, marvelous, difficult, impossible, awesome, over the top, and remember what that word is? It's Pella, like the windows, Pella. And, and this is the word used here. Okay, so after saying these great words in the first five verses, Hashem makes this statement, then He continues with more great promises, clear up to verse 18, and then it starts over with the word of the Lord again, and then He will actually answer the question that started chapter 7 with the Jews coming from Bethel to ask about the ninth of off. Remember, we're still in the context of answering the question of the ninth of off. And so we had the negative answer, your fasting wasn't unto me and it was worthless to me. And now we have the positive answer, I will return to Jerusalem. Okay, so, um, so we have this insert in verse 6. It is marvelous in the eyes of the people. If it is marvelous in the eyes of the people in those days, which is future tense. If it is marvelous, it may seem marvelous to the remnant of this people at that time, which is our time, when Messiah returns. That's our time. And so, but, but God says, should it be marvelous in my eyes? And so what is the marvelous word there in the NIV, or awesome, or unbelievable, or miraculous? It's the Pella word. And so we, you got to love the Pella word. And I asked Rabbi Ari in J Jerusalem one year, I go, so is, is conversational Hebrew use Pella very much? And he goes, a little bit, but not that much. It's reserved for God stuff. <laughs> and, and so that, as well it should be, right? Uh, so, so this is his way of saying nothing is impossible for me. It may seem impossible to the people, but does it seem impossible to me? I can do anything is what God is saying by this verse here. Nothing is impossible for me. Like, like that uh, verse that says he has more than we can imagine or think stored up for us. That's like a Pella thing. And so here he, he has more stored up for Zion than anybody can imagine or believe. And he's saying it's no big deal to me. I can do anything. It's Pella to you, but it's not Pella to me. Okay. 
So he has huge plans for Israel, and it will um, it will be more than anybody can imagine. So so he can do it, and he will do it. So here's that that cool word that we love. And so where where is uh, where's a place that we looked at Caleb before? Do you remember uh, Abraham and Sarah and Yeshua shows up at Theophanies and, and says, Sarah will have a son, and, and she laughs, right? And so Isaac means laughter. <laughs> but but um, when she laughed, God's answer was, why do you laugh? Is anything too pella for me? Ain't that cool? Is anything too pella for our God? <laughs> and so everything about the Abrahamic covenant, as we saw in Genesis, there is nothing about Israel that's natural. It is all supernatural. The plan of God is totally supernatural. And it's starting with uh, Sarah having a, a child when, when she's uh, older, right? Impossible, supernatural, this is what Pella can mean. Israel is Pella. A miracle from the beginning. And oh, Hashem told Jeremiah, Jeremiah to buy land uh, as Babylon was about to conquer Israel. And he tells Jeremiah, go buy that plot of land. Now why would you buy a plot of land that's going to belong to Babylon in, in a day or two? See, this would be very dumb to pay money for it. And, and so then God said he would bring them back in Jeremiah 32. So he says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is there anything too Pella for me? And that was in response to bringing them back from Babylon, which is where we're at now in Zechariah. They have just returned. So my favorite Pella verse, though, is with Shemshon, you know, Samson. Remember, I love that story with, in Judges about, about Samson's parents. She, mommy's barren. And, and God comes and says that you're, you're going to have a child. And so Daddy, uh, not yet, but going to be, says, what is your name? And God says, it's too Pella for you. <laughs> it's too marvelous, too amazing, too over the top. You can't handle it. <laughs> and so then he goes, and now I'm going to do a Pella thing. Hell is right there twice in one verse here. And he ascends in the, they made a little altar and made a sacrifice for the angel of the Lord there, Yeshua again. And the, and the angel of the Lord then ascends in the fire up to heaven. And, and daddy goes, we're dead. We've seen God. We're dead. And mom goes, oh, shut up. <laughs> if he meant to kill us, would he have accepted our offering and promised a child? And he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> but, but there's Pella twice. He did a Pella thing. Uh, people can ascend in the flame up to God, right? Back to the throne. So, but God can. So it's Pella. So may the Lord do Pella things in our day, right? The, uh, the rebirth of Israel in and in 48 was a Pella thing to the, to the world. And he did it. And so now, what about coming back and, and making the kingdom? Now, this is Pella Ma'od. Pella Pella. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that's what's coming to the world today. As, as everything looks like it's falling apart, get ready for Pella events. Oh, man. <laughs> then the, okay, so then in Zechariah 8.6, it may seem Pella to the people, but it will not be Pella to me. So, amen. Pella Pella. May we worship our Pella Messiah. <laughs> our amazing, over-the-top, miraculous, can't-be-contained type of person. Messiah Yeshua Hashem. So, uh, so then verse 7, see, was a Pella promise. I will save my people from the east and to the west. Okay, so that's, uh, I will save my people from the countries of the east and the west. I'll bring them back and live in Jerusalem, and they will be my people, and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. So this is where I jumped at the start of the message, because I was eager to get here. <laughs> so I will save my people. So now that hasn't happened yet, 
right? That's the national salvation of Israel is in, until chapter 12. Okay? And I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and, and will be my people, and I'll be their God in truth and righteousness. Okay. And, the, and it says from the, from the uh, east and the west. So, uh, as you can see here, this verse has not been fulfilled. Uh, has God forsaken His people? By no means. That's Romans 11, right? He brings them back and then they are His people and He is their God. This is the salvation of Israel as a nation and I will show you how this is future tense and never been fulfilled yet but refers to our time. How, um, how awesome this verse and this promise and this prophecy spoken by God um, how Pella it is, and we're about to be in it. So get ready, um, and we will participate in it as we are, as we already are. So first, though, Hashem says, "I will, I will save and bring back." Now, they can't. This can't be talking about the return from Babylon because they're already back. So what is it talking about? That return had already happened. And it was, it was just a handful of people, not, not all of the people. So this prophecy is meant for the future. Second of all, this return was just one direction from Babylon. Because a lot of people want to say this is already all fulfilled so they can get rid of the kingdom. Right? Uh, uh, all millennialism and preteritism and that stuff is to get rid of the kingdom. So I'm saying that this has never happened yet and it refers to our time because when they came back from Babel, it was just from the east, Mizrah. I will bring them back from the west is what it says here. Now what's west of Israel? The ocean. So it has to refer to the nations that are in the oceans, the coastlands, and all this refers to the nations. So west of Israel is like Europe and America and South America and part of Africa and all this. West, they never came back from the west because they were transported to the east to Babel. Okay, so that return was just one direction from the east. And it says from the east and the Lord and from the land of the sitting of the sun. Your translation might just say west. But in Hebrew, it's the land of the sitting, setting of the sun. You know the sun comes up, Misrach, down Ma'arav. Nakon, Nakon. <laughs> Correct. You guys know this stuff, right? And especially in Colorado, we have mountains to tell us which way west is. <laughs> when you go out to Missouri, you never know where you're at. You're just lost. All you people listening in Missouri, you're lost. <laughs> I don't know anybody from Missouri. No one here would ever go there. We're very intelligent here. <laughs> I hope they're not watching. Uh, it's the land of Ha Shemash. What is Ha Shemash? Shemash's son. Uh, same as Shimshon's name, Samson's name, meant sun. Okay? Uh, that sun. Okay, so you know where the sun sets in the west. So this is a way of saying from the whole earth. This can only be after the worldwide dispersion of 70 AD and 135 AD. This cannot be anything that happened in Zechariah's day. This has to be a return from all the nations. And as Isaiah as a, um, also spoke of this, and we don't have very much time today, but I'll, I'll try to get something in here. Um, yes, in Isaiah 43, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. So this is a prophecy. All the nations gather together. Right? And, and uh, so in Isaiah 43, he's talking about the same thing. From all four corners, all four directions of the earth, he brings them back. So this is happening today, not in Zechariah's day. And then it says, and they are honored and precious in his sight there in verse 4. So we're seeing the return today, and since 48 specifically. And, but one 
But our verse here is not fulfilled today. Why is it still not fulfilled with the return of 48 and, and what is going on today? Because this has to still be future tense because he has not become their God yet. Most of Israel is still atheistic or agnostic and, and not uh, God-fearing. Uh, even Tel Aviv is considered the friendliest city in the world for gay rights. And, and so it's not a nation following God yet. If it was, we'd be praying on Temple Mount in May. We don't get to pray on Temple Mount in May because Jordan still runs Temple Mount because Israel has a secular government, which we're praying for it to become a biblical government because Israel is biblical. Oh my. Okay, don't get me started. All right, so anyway, this is going to take place, though. Israel will have Hashem as their God, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. So this requires the national salvation with the return of Yeshua to be their Mashiach, their, their Messiah. So the return is on, but the salvation is yet future in chapter 12. So also, what does this mean? That they will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem? you got to love this. How can all of Israel dwell in the midst of Jerusalem? Well, they can't. So what does this mean? That they will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. The midst word is in the Hebrew text. Now in the NIV, if you read NIV, they left it out. They'll just dwell in Jerusalem. But if you read it in the Hebrew, they will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. So all Israel can't dwell in the midst of Israel. So what does this mean? Is that what is in the midst of Jerusalem? The center of worship. This will be Hashem's throne and the temple, the temple mount. So, so it doesn't mean that they're actually dwelling, not actually residing, but they are all focused on the throne. They're all focused on the worship of the Lord. And, and this goes back to verse 3, the city and then the mountain will be holy and righteous. The Lord Almighty's mountain, the holy mountain, the dwelling of the people here is a reference to worship. The whole center of Israel, the whole center of the Jewish people in all the land of Israel at that time will all be focused on the throne in the midst of Jerusalem. And their dwelling there is that they will all be worshiping there. Not uh, actually sleeping there, but worshiping there. Okay, praise and worship. And who's going to be right in the middle of all that? You guys. Oh, man, it's, it's coming soon. Hold on. So there's more future tense promises coming in the next few verses. And then, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I need to stop here somewhere. Hosea prophesied along with Zechariah. He uses, the, the as far as this uh, return word here in chapter 2, um, where should I read uh, 19? I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice. So here we have the same terms for Jerusalem. In love and compassion. Uh, and, and I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called, not my loved one, lo ami. I will say to those called, not my people, uh, lo am. You are my people now. So this goes from not my people, and then you are my people. This is the same thing Zechariah is speaking here with the salvation of Zion. And they will say, you are my God. At that time, Yeshua will become the God of Israel. Not yet, but soon. Okay? Lo ami and ami. Uh, and the restoration of the wedding covenant there in Hesed and mercy, uh, the betrothal of, um, in faithfulness and righteousness. And you shall know the Lord. And knowing the Lord is a reference to intimacy with God, knowing the Lord. So it's going to be great. Of course, this is prophesied to include the nations, right? And that, which means the Gentile church. And uh, one thing here in verse 8, um, I might have mentioned this earlier sometime. <laughs> I will bring them back and live in Jerusalem. They will be my people and I will be. Yes. If you read Hebrew, I will be, 
What do you see in Hebrew? I will be. This is Aye. The same thing God said to Moses when Moshe at the burning bush says, What is your name so I can tell them who sent me? And he said, Aye. So Aye is I will be. And we've heard this before that uh, I am that I am. But it is in future tense. I will be that I will be, or I am becoming what I will become. And as the rabbis teach, this means that God is always more than you can have, imagine, or contain, or understand. He is always more. He is, I will be as I will be, means He is inexhaustible, and you'll never come to the end of it. It's just a continuous, eternal thing of, of being pelaized by God. He is so pella that we will be pelaized and there's no end to it. He, as soon as we have come to Him, I have become now. No, He says, no, I, I will become more than that. <laughs> See, this is a God you want to have. Because there's always an end to good food. There's always a good an end to whatever you like to do. Walking in the mountains, for me, is called winter. <laughs> there's always an end to good things. But not. There is no end to our God and His magnificence, His Pella traits. And that's, that's our future. And it's never ending. Being uh, Pellaized, which it needs to be in our dictionary now. <laughs> Do you love Pella? Mm -hmm. Our Pella God. So I, I'll stop there. Uh, I think. Aye, yes. Aye. And then that word gets uh, enlarged to the tetragrammaton uh, without explanation uh, later. But in the beginning, with God's name, it was Aye. Amen. Because he's Pella. So I, I stop. Uh, this week I, I, um, I have so much stuff to do in the store. I had two boxes in there and, and people uh, I knew were coming and, and I thought, okay, I gotta get this stuff done. And I, oh, uh, I need a moment. So I come and sit down in this chair. Watch out for this chair right here. Because <laughs> there's a hole in the ceiling. Because I was sitting there and I was thinking about God and I thought, I, I know you love me and all this, but I feel like I kind of just need to do something for you. You know? You ever have one of those moments? And, but I don't know how to that and, and you know I and I so I'm thinking okay the father God is sitting next to me okay what do you do see I never had a dad and I never been a dad and so I don't know anything about this um, you know and and uh, but I got this little doggy Jones little doggy <laughs> and it's old now and it's failing and I'm not over my last dog yet and, uh, and I always tell my dog I got you I got you I'll always have you. And uh, so I'm sitting here and, and it's like uh, God's telling me, the Father God is telling me, I got you, man. I'll always have you. It's okay. I got you. <sighs> and so I thought, okay, I'll lean over and, you know, because I don't know how to relate to it that And so I, and that's when the ceiling started to leak. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's all this dripping on my shirt. And I thought, goodness gracious, it's not rained in years here. <laughs> and the ceiling's leaking. And, and <clears throat> anyway, do you know that this Pella God that is so big, that he's never going to be exhausted. Do you know he's got you? Yes. He's got you. You can, 
you can just rest yes. in that. I got you, man. Wow. That's good, huh? So then the door opened and there's customers out there and I'm just a mess. <laughs> Shalom. <laughs> May we be a mess all the days of our life with that intimacy and him saying, I got you. I got you. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you and lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace. Oh, I got you. Yes, I got you. Jesus the Messiah. Amen and amen. Yavarekaka Adonai for Yishmareka. Yeir Adonai Panavaleka Vichulacha. Isa Adonai Panavaleka Voyoseim. Laka Shalom. Bashem Yeshua Hamashiach. Sarah Shalom. Amen and amen.